Hi everyone, this is the second chapter after the belt drive. Basically, the gear drive principles are almost similar to the belt drive that we have learned in the previous session. So, uh, you are about to calculate uh, the gear ratio and then the power transmission uh, depending on the geometrical and also the size of the gears. Okay. Okay, as for the introduction, a gear can be described as a tooth wheel that when meshed together with another smaller in diameter tooth wheel. In this case, you have two wheel, two tooth wheel. The smaller one usually called the pinion. The bigger one is called gear. This one should be able to transmit the rotation from one shaft to another. So the primary function of a gear is to transfer power from one shaft to another while maintaining a definite ratio between the velocities of the shaft rotation. So you might want to calculate the speed ratio after you get the gear ratio. And then the teeth of a driving gear mesh push on the driven gear setting a force component perpendicular to the gear radius thus a torque is transmitted and because the gear is rotating power is transferred so gears are good torque transmitters than chain drives and belt drives obviously gear are standardized to as a tooth shape and size of course you have to consider different geometrical factors but in this case in this chapter only we going to cover with the diameter or radius and how many tools that the gear have hence gear materials need to be as rigid as possible to prevent wear and power loss depending on the torque requirements so different requirements uh, different torque requirements uh, requires different uh, kind of materials for example, lower torque, you can use plastic materials. High torque, you can use uh, hard metal or you can have a uh, hard steel and so on. The outcome of this course requires you to calculate the power input output using gear ratio and that the gear ratio is depending on the gear type and then configuration, diameters and so on. Commonly, there are three types of gears. The first one is the parallel axis gears. So commonly, uh, is the spur or helical gears. This one is to transmit power without changing any of the directions. The second one and the third one is actually able to change the direction. The, the second one is the non-parallel, which is the coplanar gears. Some example which is the bevel and spiral gears. And then the third one is the non-parallel, non-coplanar gears. As example which is the worm gears. Okay, in a parallel axis gears, this one is the simplest and the most popular type of gear because they connect the shaft and can transfer a large amount of power with high efficiency. Spur and helical gears are the two primary gears. So in this chapter, we we'll focus on the spur gears only because the helical gear is quite complicated design. So compared to the spur gears, helical gears are cut with an angle. Helical gears, the teeth, okay, the teeth enter the meshing zone progressively and then therefore have a smooth action than spur gears teeth. Helical gear also tend to be quieter. Of course, it come out with a cost. Huh? Helical gear can transmit heavier load and then have longer lifetime compared to the spur gears. Spur gears is pretty much, pretty much direct because the simple design and also the contact surface tend to have a much more uh, as prone to damage. As in the coplanar gears, beaver gear main function is to redirect the direction of the power around the corner. 
So basically, you are trying to change, for example, in helicopter from horizontal towards a vertical rotation. So you can see it in the helicopter. Tongue twisting. Non-parallel, non-compliant gears are more complex in both geometry and manufacturing than the previous gear type. So this kind of gear is hard to be made and then the design itself, the material need to be precise. A worm gear drive with cylindrical teeth illustrate this class of gear. The axes are non-parallel and non co planar So this gear provides high reduction ratio than the co planar or simply cross axis gear set but their load carrying capacity is low compared to other type. The contact pressure is extremely high and then the wear rate is also high. Hard to be produced and then hard to maintain. Thus, these gears are used only for light load application only. As I mentioned before, in gear, you have two different size of wheels with tools. The bigger one is called gear and then the small one is called pinion. And then you have the set of tools circling of the wheel. And then in gears, the diameter without tools is the root diameter. Okay, root diameter. And then the tools has a, a hole depth which is HT. And then the tooth upper half is called addendum A. And the lower half is the addendum B. The distance from the center of the gear to the half distance of the tooth is called pitch radius. So the pitch radius or the pitch diameter can be used to calculate the gear ratio as well as the power transmission. Here is the detailed design of the gear tooth. Over here, you have pitch circle. Pitch circle is actually a circle from circumference came from the diameter or the radius of the root plus the dedendum distance towards the middle of the tooth. So you have pitch circle. So circular pitch is the distance measured on the pitch circle from one point on one tooth to a corresponding point to the adjacent tooth. So another one is the diametral pitch. Do not be confused with the pitch diameter. Diameter pitch PD is the number of T's in the gear per pitch diameter. So you have to consider the diameter and also the number of teeth per each diameter, per pitch diameter. So of course, the diameter pitch is the number of teeth and then you have the module M is the ratio, the pitch diameter to the number of teeth. So the diameter divided by the number of teeth. So previously we have the pitch diameter, two different things compared to the diameter pitch. So diameter pitch is the number of teeth. Okay. The purpose of meshing gear teeth is to provide constant instantaneous relative motion between the engaging gears. To achieve this tooth action, the common of the curves of the two meshing gear teeth must pass through a common point is called pitch point on the pitch circle. So previously I've already mentioned the pitch circle, okay, which is the circle including the diameter, root diameter plus the dendum. Okay, so that one is circling this pitch point. In the basic gear box theory, you can transmit torque from one shaft to another shaft by using gearbox right in the middle in between these two shafts. Power transmitted by torque is applied to the shaft. Torque, in this case, we use T, 
capital T or sometimes we can use tau. Ideally, in gears, power input should be equivalent to power output. So, power is equivalent to torque multiplied by the angular velocity in radian per second. So, in this equation should be torque 1 times angular velocity 1 for the power input which is equivalent to torque 2 times angular velocity 2 okay omega 2 so you need to convert this angular velocity to velocity by multiply by 2 pi divided by 60 seconds okay it's actually 2 pi divided by 60 seconds times velocity so velocity is n so the n1 is the input velocity n2 is the output velocity which is equivalent to t2 divided by t1 equivalent to n1 divided by n2 which is is the gear ratio so in real gear you have power loss due to friction you have heat you have wear so these several factors affecting the power output so overall power output is much less is lesser than the power input so you can have the power efficiency eta the symbol like n eta is the efficiency is defined as power output okay divided by power input and then which is equivalent to n2 which is the velocity of gear 2 divide uh, times torque 2 okay so the first two n n2 and t2 is the output divided by the n1 t1 so you can get the efficiency so mostly efficiency probably like 80 90 percent but not equivalent to 100 percent to transmit power from t1 to t2 you have to go through the gearbox t3 so in this case in order for you to completely transfer the torque or energy or power from the first shaft to the second shaft the gearbox body need to be clamped or need to be fixed in order to prevent the assembly from rotating so you don't want any assembly to rotate so in this case according to the newton law so you need to have an equivalent torque that counterbalance back this first t1 and t2 torque so this this one is called a holding torque or holding torque so t1 plus t2 plus 3 t3 which is equivalent to zero here's some example for problem related to gearbox a gearbox has an input speed of 1500 rpm or revolution per minute clockwise and the output speed of 300 rpm anti-clockwise the input power is 20 kilowatt and the efficiency is 70 percent determine the first one is the gear ratio second one the input torque third is the output power the fourth is the output torque and the last one is the holding torque as for the gear ratio you need to use the input speed and output speed so you can use the revolution per minute value so the input speed is n1 divided by the output speed is n2 so in this case you have 1500 rpm divided by 300 rpm which is equivalent to 5 so this one is the gear ratio as for the second question is the the input torque the input torque you need to use the power equation power is equivalent to torque multiplied by the angular velocity so this angular velocity is in radian per second you need to change into meter per second so you need to be careful with the units 
using the equation P is equivalent to T is uh, multiplied by omega, you should be able to calculate the initial torque or the input torque T1 which is equivalent to equivalent to the power divided by the velocity. Then you can get the 127.3 Newton meter. As for the output power, you can use the efficiency at 70%, which is in this case eta, which is equivalent to 0.7, which is equivalent to power output divided by power input. So you can get the power output, which is the power input multiplied by 0.7, which is equivalent to 14 kilowatt. And then the output torque. So the output torque you need to use P2 equivalent to T2 times omega 2. So omega 2 need to be convert into meter per second so that you can get the output torque T2 which is equivalent to 60 times power output divided by 2 pi N2. So from here, you can get the output torque of 445.6 Newton meter. So in this case, the direction of the second torque will be the anti-clockwise. The first one is the clockwise. So usually in the equilibrium equation, we use counterclockwise as positive and then the clockwise is negative. And then as for the holding torque, you need to use T1, the initial torque, okay, T1 plus T2 plus T3, which is equivalent to zero. So the first T1 is, sorry, this one is clockwise, so it should be negative 127.3 plus T2 which is counterclockwise or anticlockwise which is 445.6 plus T3 which is equivalent to 0 then you can get T3 which is equivalent to minus 318.3 newton meter so over here T3 you have negative value so if you have negative value so this one should be anti-clockwise you can have a various type of gear trains the first one is the simple gear train the second one is the compound gear train and then you have the reverted gear train and then you can also have epicyclic gear train so in this case gear train you need to rely on the pitch diameter pitch diameter or sometimes you can use pitch circle diameter so pitch circle diameter you can uh, refer back to the previous slides as for the simple train gear the direction of rotation is reversed from one gear to another gear so if you want to maintain the output or the final output rotation so you need to have a another gear in the middle between those two gears input and output gears so this gear is called idler the teeth on the gear must be all the same okay gear a b c need to have a similar gear size dimension and so on so that gear a can move smoothly and then b also and c also can also move smoothly if not if the gear size is not the same then you need you can have a uh, gear stuck in the middle or the misalignment and so on the velocity at any point of the circle must be the same for all gears this means the angular velocity at gear a is equivalent in gear b and also equivalent in gear c so velocity okay in radian per second angular velocity is in radian per second you can use uh, to change into linear velocity 
So linear velocity is V is equivalent to omega times D over 2. So D over 2 is the radius. D is the pitch circle diameter. Or you can use R, pitch radius. Okay. And then you can have modem, M. Modem is the numbers of the diameter divided by the number of tooth. Okay. The number of tooth of each gear. So in this case, if you have M, modem of uh, gear A should be DA over TA. Diameter A divided by number of tooth A. So this one must be equivalent to gear B, DB over TB and also must be equivalent to DC over TC. Regardless of the diameter, the numbers and also the diameter, the division of between diameter divided by the number of tooth should be equivalent for all gears. So that means the size of the gears, size of the teeth should be the same. So, of course, using the velocity equations, uh, omega A times the pitch radius or times pitch diameter divided by 2. So, you can have the equation of omega A times dA equivalent to omega B times dB equivalent to, uh, to omega C times dC. So, dA you can change into modem times number of teeth. So, you can remove the M on the each of the equation so that you can have Omega A times TA is also equivalent to Omega B times TB equivalent to Omega C times TC. So Omega A is the velocity. Either you can use angular velocity or you can use revolution per minute and so on as NA. So NA is the velocity at gear A times TA, okay, the equivalent to velocity at B times TB and then equivalent to velocity at C times TC. So from this, you, you can get the gear ratio. So gear ratio to each other, for example, uh, gear ratio in between A to B or B to C and so on. Here's some example for the simple train problem. A simple train has three gears. Gear A is the input and has 50 T's. Gear C is the output and has 150 T's. That means gear B here is the idler. Gear A rotates at 1500 revolution per minute, 1500 RPM anti-clockwise. Calculate the gear ratio and the output speed. The input torque on A is 12 newton meter and the efficiency is 75%. Calculate the output torque and the holding torque. So over here you have at least four questions related. So for the gear ratio, it's quite easy because you can use the input versus output speed and then the number of tools, okay, of the gear, input gear and output gear. So you can you can have the ratio. So gear ratio is actually the NA, which is the input velocity divided by output velocity NC, which is equivalent to TC, which is the number of T's of gear C divided by number of T's at gear C, at uh, gear A. So this one should be equivalent to 150 divided by 50. So it should be equivalent to 3. So here you don't have to find out the velocity first because you can get the ratio from the number of teeth ratio from each of the gear. So since the gear ratio is 3, so NA 
divided by nc is equivalent to 3. So over here the input here, okay, the velocity is 1500 revolution per minute. So to calculate the output revolution, output uh, speed, you need to divide the 1500 RPM divided by 3. So you can get the output velocity which is 500 revolution per minute anti-clockwise because you can have idler in the middle. So basically, if the first one you have uh, anti-clockwise, the idler should rotate clockwise and then the output gear should rotate anti-clockwise. So as for the second, sorry, the third question, the input torques, sorry, the output power and the holding uh, holding torque. So you can use the efficiency eta is equivalent to 75%. So in this case, for the power output, P output, which is equivalent to efficiency eta times power input. So the power input is you need to calculate using the equation P is equivalent to T times omega. Okay. T is the top for gear A. Okay. Times the angular velocity of gear A. So the angular velocity need to be changed into linear velocity in meter per second. So that you can have 1885 watt of input power. And then that input power 1885 watt times 0 0.75, you can get 1413.7 watt. This one is the output power. As for the output torque, TC, this one, you should be able to calculate using P is equivalent to T times omega. So change the omega into the linear velocity from radian per second to meter per second. Then rearrange back this equation so that you can get TC is equivalent to 60 seconds times power output divided by 2 pi NC. Okay, and C is the revolution per minute. Okay, so it should be equivalent to 27 Newton meter. So from the equation, to calculate the holding torque, TA plus TC, T input plus T output, plus T holding, holding torque, T hold, should be equivalent to zero. Then you can get the holding torque of minus 39 Newton meter clockwise. So this one, you should relate with the anti-clockwise rotation from the input and then the clockwise rotation from uh, idler and then at the output gear should be anti-clockwise again. For compound gears, compound gears are a chain of simple gear trains with input of a second being the output of the first so you can have four gears actually input gear and output gear a and gear d while bc is actually the idler gear in the middle lah. it should be the gearbox and so on so gear a is rotating the gear b while having the similar shaft of gear C from gear C rotating the gear D so this one is compound gears gear B is the output of gear A and B gear B, C are locked onto the same shaft gear C is the input of gear C and B so, of course, the velocity of gear 
A Okay, velocity of each tooth on gear A and B should be the same and then gear C and D should be the same. So you have these two equations. So gear A and B, omega A times tooth number at A, TA, should be equivalent to omega B times TB. Another equation which is the omega C times TC is equivalent to omega D times TD. So you can rederive this equation into omega A is equivalent to TB omega B divided by TA and omega C. And then you multiply together omega A times omega C. So that you can get this equation. Omega A times Omega C divided by Omega B times Omega D is equivalent to TB times TD divided by TA times TC. So in this case, since gear B and C is on the same side, Omega B and Omega C should be the same. So then you can rederive back this equation. Omega A Okay, the angular velocity in gear A, omega A, divided by omega D should be equivalent to TB times TD divided by TA times TC. Then you can get the gear ratio. So, omega is the angular velocity which is 2 pi times revolution per minute. So, you need to multiply by 60. Okay, so the gear ratio should be the velocity input velocity n n1 or na divided by uh, output velocity is equivalent to tb times td divided by ta times tc so th then you can get the gear ratio here's some example for the compound gear train calculate the gear ratio for the compound change shown below in this in that figure if the input gear rotates clockwise, in which the direction does the output rotate? So input is clockwise. What is the direction of the output gear? So over here, you have gear A, B, C attached together and D, E attached together into one shaft. And then the output gear is F. So, gear A you have 20 T's, B is 100, C is 40, D is 100, E is 10, F is 100. So, the driving T's are A, C and E. Okay. So, A, B, B is the output. And then C, D, D is the output. E, F, F is the output. So that means the velocity of AB should be the same. And then the angular velocity of BC should be the same. And then D and E also the same. The driving teeth A and B, C and E is the driving teeth. The driven is B, D and F. So the gear ratio you need to use the velocity equation for each gear. So you need to use ratio. So over here, gear ratio, 100 times 100 times 100. So over here, then 100 came from gear B, gear D and gear F. So here you have gear B 100 T's time gear D and gear F T's. Divided by 20 times 40 times 10. Here is the gear A, which is 20 T's. And then gear C is 40 T's. And then gear E is 10 T's. So you can get the ratio is 125. Okay, basically you multiply all the driving T's sorry multiply all the 
driven this and then divided by all the multiply uh, multiply product of all driving teeth. So over here you have the overall the overall gear ratio is 125. But in this case, in this compound chain, you have actually three type of uh, three gear ratio between A and B. C and D and E and F. So you can actually calculate all three of them. Okay, so make sure you divide, uh, calculate by using the output this divided by input this of each set, each pair. A and B, so this B divided by this A. For CD ratio should be this D divided by this C and so on. So each change reverse the direction of rotation. So A is clockwise, B the rotation should be anti-clockwise as well as C, and then D should be clockwise as well as E, and E change into anti-clockwise for F. Next is the planetary or epicyclic gears. Basically, in one gear, you have another gear or you have a lot of gear in one gear. So, epicyclic means one gear revolving upon another and around another. So, the design can produce a large gear ratio in a smaller space. So, you have a lot of gear inside one gear. The basic th theory of the epicyclic gear train, you have A, B, C, D in this figure. So B is the planet gear and then C is the sun gear connected using the arm. And then over here, you have to observe point P. Okay, gear B revolves once. Okay, gear B revolves once on its own axis at the as the arm rotates at full circle. Okay, you have to imagine that the arm rotating along the sun gear, but the planet gear or the gear B is also rotating at its own axis. And then the arm stationary and gear C rotate once. So B spins about its center. Okay, once you move the arm, the, the gear B spins about its center by TC over TB. The number of T's of C divided by the number of T's of B. So TC over TB times. For example, if the Number of teeth of sun is 100, and then the number of teeth of B is 20. So 100 over 20 should having 5. So B spins about 5 times at about its center. And then C is fixed and arm revolves once. So B revolves by TC over TB and then plus 1 okay because this one you have to relate also with the sun gear so original B spins about 5 times and then plus 1 so 5 plus 1 now imagine the whole system revolves once means the arm revolves once identify gear that is fixed is C. Okay, gear C is fixed and rotate it backwards one revolution, keeping arm fixed. Okay, now the gear C is rotate backwards one revolution, one revolution backwards, and then add them up. So you have to use the table given in this slide. Okay. 
So you have first step, second step, and third step. So you need to make into a table of step, action, and then gear A, B, C. So step one, action is revolve all and all once. Okay, revolve once. All gear A, B, C revolve once. So you should put at A, B, C, 1, B is 1, C is 1. So for the second step, if you revolve C by minus 1 revolution, okay, minus 1 revolution means C is minus 1, then A should be equivalent to 0 and B should be equivalent to plus TC over TB. Number of tooth C divided by number of tooth B. And then the third action, third step, is add. So, gear A is 1. Gear B is 1 plus TC over TB. Okay. And then C is equivalent to 0. Basically, you add from the column A. 1 plus 0 plus uh, 1 plus 0 is equivalent to 1. So column B is 1 plus TC over TB is equivalent to 1 plus TC over TB. Okay. And then column number 3, you add up first row 1 plus minus 1. So it should be equivalent to 0. Here's some example for the epicyclic gear train. So a simple epicyclic gear has a fixed sun gear okay, with 100 teeth and a planetary gear or planet gear with 50 teeth. If the arm is revolved once, how many times the planet gear revolve? So one time revolution of the arm is equivalent to how many times of the planetary gear revolve uh, revolution. So you make it to the table of steps 1, 2, 3, action, and you have to put another 3 column for gear A, B, C. So the first step, all gear revolve all once. So over here, 1, 1, 1. Gear A is 1, gear B is 1, gear C is 1. Step number 2, revolve C, okay, the sun gear, to minus 1 revolution. So A should be 0, B is equivalent to 100, okay, so this one is TC over TB, so 100 of, divided by 50, and then for gear C is minus 1 revolution. And then the last step is add, add the two row of first step and second step, so that you can get at column A, 1 plus 0 is equivalent to 1. And then B, column B, 1 plus 2, okay, from 100 divided by 50, 1 plus 2 is equivalent to 3. And then C is 1 plus minus 1 is equivalent to 0. So that means gear B makes 3 revolutions for every one of the arm. Okay, 1 revolution of the arm is equivalent to 3 revolutions. And then how to calculate the gear ratio for the epicyclic gear? Case 1, arm is input. The arm is the input and D is the output. C is fixed. And then part of the outer casing of the gearbox. And then the planet and the internal gear rotate same direction. Here's some example for case one uh, epicyclic gear. An epicyclic gear box has a fixed outer gear C with 240 teeth. The planet gears have 20 teeth. Okay, planet gear. So B and uh, B is the planet gear. Okay, the input is arm um, and cage A. So A. A is the input. 
and the output is the sun gear D. Okay, so you have gear C and gear D, similar like sun gear. Calculate the number of the T's on the sun gear. Okay, sun gear, sun gear D, and the ratio of the gearbox. So you need to calculate the ratio of the gearbox. So pitch circular, pitch circle diameter of the outer gear must be the sum summation of the pitch circle diameter of the sun gear plus twice the pitch circle diameter of the planet gear. So it follows that the number of T's are related as follows. So TC is the number of tools at gear C should be equivalent to the number of the additional uh, addition of TD, the number of tools of D, okay, sun gear D, plus 2TB. 2TB is the, the planet gear of B. You have two, pen, uh, two planet gear, two planet gear of B, eh? So you have 2TB. So you just put that in the equation. TC is 240, 240, which is equivalent to TD that you don't know, plus 2 times 20 for TB. Eh? TB is 20. Then you can get the number of tools at gear D. Okay. Number of T's, eh? number of T's at sun gear D, which is equivalent to 240 minus 40, so that you can get 200 T's. Then, if you want to find out the gear ratio, okay, you need to use the steps table. Okay, step number 1, 2, 3, and then the action, revolve all at once, revolve C minus 1, and add. Use back this one. And then, of course, in here you have four gears. So you need to put four columns of A, B, C, D gears. So step number one, revolve all once. So all of these gears revolve one time. So A is equivalent to one, B is one, C is one, D is one. And then as for the second step, revolve C to minus one revolution okay minus one revolution means at a should be become zero and b should be minus 240 okay minus 240 divided by 20 okay divided by 20 okay this one should be tc over tb okay tc over tb so minus 240 divided by 20 should be equivalent to 12, minus 12. And then at column C is minus 1. C is revolution minus 1. Eh? Okay. And then D should be 240 divided by 200. So this one is equivalent to TC divided by TD. Okay, T, TC is 240, TD is 200. Then you can add up all this column. One column A, 1 plus 0 is equivalent to 1. Column B, 1 minus 1 plus minus 12, and then should be equivalent to minus 11. And then C, 1 plus uh, minus 1 is equivalent to 0. D is equivalent to 1 plus 240 divided by 200. Then it should be equivalent to 2.2. So the ratio for gear A towards gear D or A slash D should be 1 uh, to 1 to 2.2. So that is the gear ratio. In this case for the epicyclic gears. So here's another case for the epicyclic gears. 
So case number two, sun gear D is fixed and the internal gear C is the output. Here is the sample or the example problem for the epicyclic gear for uh, case number two. So an epicyclic gearbox has a fixed sun gear D and then the internal gear C is the output with 300 teeth. The planet gear B have 30 teeth. The input is the arm and cage A. So arm and cage A is the input. Gear B is the planet gear. Gear C and D. D is the sun gear. Okay. So for this case, TC should be equivalent to TD plus 2TB. Okay, similar as the previous cases. Huh? So the number of T's of C should be equivalent to the number of T's D plus 2 times TB. So that you can input the value into this equation. 300 plus TD. Okay. 300 is equivalent to TD plus 2 times 30. Then you can get TD is equivalent to 240 T's. So you need to remember that TC is the internal gear. TD is the sun gear. Now, gear D is fixed. And then the arm must do one revolution so that D is rotated back into one revolution. Holding the arm stationary. So of course over here. You need to make sure. All this step is related to the sun gear rotation. Or sun gear revolution. Previously in case 1. Uh, the gear C is the sun gear. So sun gear need to be revolved. Minus 1 revolution. So, in this case, gear D is the sun gear. So, gear D should be revolved minus 1 revolution. So, here you put the step tables. Okay, put all the gears A, B, C, D column. So, step number 1, all gears remove uh, revolve once, one time. So, A is equivalent to 1, B is 1, C is 1, D is 1 revolution. And then step number two, revolve D into minus one revolution. So in this case, D is the sign gear, so D is minus one. So A is equivalent to zero, B is equivalent to 240 divided by 30. So this case is TD divided by TB. Okay, TD sun gear D divided by uh, divided by planet gear B. Okay. And then C which is 240 divided by 300. Okay. That means TD divided by TC. Okay. Previously at B is TD divided by TB. TD divided by TB and then column C TD divided by TC and then D is minus 1 revolution and then add all those column A you can get 1 plus 0 is 1 B you can get 1 plus 8 is equivalent to 9 C is 1 plus 0 0.8 which is equivalent to 1.8 and D is 1 plus minus 1 is equivalent to 0. So the ratio of gear A towards C is 1 to 1.8. So this is the gear ratio. This one is the example for the case 3 of epicyclic gear. Compound gear C and D is introduced. Compound, eh? Two different gear is one is on one shaft. Gear B is fixed, and gear C is rotated upon it and around it. Okay, gear C is the planetary gear, planet gear. 
Okay, gear B is the sun gear. And then gear C is rigidly attached to gear D. Okay, now you have compound gear C, D. So, E is attached to D. Okay. Then, then they all rotate at the same speed. All the rotational angular velocity is the same. Okay, angular velocity at D and C should be equivalent to angular velocity at E. Gear D mesh with output gear E. So right now, output gear is E. So you have to consider this configuration for case 3. Here is a sample problem for the case C epicyclic gear. And epicyclic gearbox is shown in the figure in this slide. Gear C has 100 teeth, gear B has 50 teeth, D has 50 teeth, and E has 50, uh, 100 teeth. Okay, over here, to calculate the ratio of the gearbox, okay, you must understand that gear B is the sun gear. So, all the calculation need to be related with the sun gear revolve minus 1. Okay. So, B is fixed sun gear. A is able to be, to be rotated in one revolution. So, B is rotated back in one revolution holding A stationary. So, A is not moving. So, the first step in the table should be all action. All gear should be revolved one time. So A, B, C, D and E should be one time revolution. And then you need to revolve sun gear B into minus one revolution. So A is becoming zero. B is minus one. C, D shaft. It's actually C, D shaft. So C, D shaft need to be related with T, B. Okay, and TC. So, over here, B is the sun gear. So, TB is 50 teeth divided by TC, which is equivalent to 100. So, 1 over 2. Okay, it's actually 0 0.5. Huh? And at gear E, so you have to consider the first one is 1 over 2. It's, like it's actually 50 divided by 100. But over here should be divided by TE. So it's actually you need to have uh, to divide it by half because uh, CD you have two gears attached on one shelf. So if TC is 100 T's and B, you have 50. So you need to consider the ratio between B and C gear. So you have 100 T's at B, uh, at, at C and then T's B have 50. So it should be, uh, should be 50 divided by 100 times 50 divided by 100. So it is actually TB over TC times TC, sorry, times TE, uh, sorry, uh, times TD over TE. Then you can get minus 1 point uh, over 4. Okay, minus 1 over 4 revolution. So it should be negative. So add all those columns so that you can get ratio of gear A towards E should be 3 to 4. Okay, so the input and output may be reversed, but the solution will be the same of ratio of 4 to 3 instead of 3 to 4. Okay. So this is an example. For the attendance, uh, please comment on the forum section in the ULEARN and then try to solve 
Okay, try to do the example here. And then the other, the last slide. Okay, so that you know how to do the calculation for the gear ratio for the epicyclic. Usually the epicyclic is pretty much on the final exam and so on. Okay, thank you very much.